Hello and welcome to this mapping demonstration video. In this video, we'll be working with data associated with the Crossrail project. Crossrail is a new railway line linking the east and west of London. You can see the route on the map below. Let's take a look at the data. There's a stations layer. Each station has a name attribute. There's a route layer. Attribute data in the route layer differentiates between surface and tunnel sections. There's a layer showing the details of the crossrail bill with the various limits of land to be acquired or used or limit of deviations. And there's also a layer of crossrail information plans where each of these rectangles represents the coverage of a PDF plan available online. The crossrail information plans layer also has an attribute with the URL to the PDF which is publicly available online. To provide background information, I've loaded a WMTS layer based on OS ZoomStack data. Great, let's publish a web map with Mappin. Here we see all projects hosted by this Mappin instance. We've already created an empty project for the Crossrail demo. For the moment, there's no published data. Mappin's admin interface allows us to change settings for each hosted project. First, we'll upload our QGIS project file containing our layers and print composer templates. Next, we specify which layers from the QGIS project we wish to publish. The admin interface shows pending configuration changes and allows them to be saved or reverted. After refreshing the project, our layers are now available. The default map extent shows the whole of the UK. We will now set the default extent and zoom level to better match our data. The map extent is simply a bounding box of plus minus 50 kilometers of the center of our data. The default extent and zoom level now look more sensible. Notice the current map center and zoom level are shown in the location bar. We'll use this information to set a sensible minimum zoom level for the project. Next, let's look at our layer names. For the moment, they are named as they are in the QGIS project. Let's alias them with more meaningful names. That looks much better after refreshing the project. The legend is dynamically generated based on the layers shown. Notice the background map has no legend. We'll now hide the legend image for the background map. The majority of mapping modules are enabled by default. We'll now disable the ones we do not require, such as measure, export, and others. Modules can be enabled or disabled easily through the admin interface. The user interface now looks much simpler. Next we'll configure the printing module. Here we need to specify the aspect ratios for each of the viewports of the four print composers in the uploaded QGIS project file. We also specify the scales we wish to print at and any map attribution text.
Find My Nearest tool can be used to locate nearby features of interest. We will now configure it to locate the nearest stations. This functionality requires access to the underlying data set, so first we need to tell Mappin where to find its data. Here we tell Mappin about the Crossrail schema, where the data resides. Next we'll tell the map in which post just table is associated with the stations layer. Next we configure the Find My Nearest tool to find nearby stations. Now when using the Find My Nearest tool, we see the closest six stations, but for the moment they are simply displayed as Found Item. We'll now update the zoom level and number of search results displayed. Rather than having results shown as Found Item, instead want the name of the station to appear in the results. First let's alias the station name attribute with a more readable name. The search visible option here means the station name will appear in the results of the Find My Nearest and Search tools. Station names are now displayed in the results. The search tool is typically used for locating addresses but can also be used to locate features in any layer. In this example, we will allow it to locate stations and information plans. First, we'll tell Mapping where to find the source data for the information plans layer. Next, we'll alias the information plan layer's name attribute. And finally, configure the search tool to locate stations and plans. Here we see results for Tottenham Court Road in the stations layer as well as the plans layer. Next we'll configure the feature info tool so users can click on map features for more information. The setting is disabled for all layers with the exception of stations and information plans. At the moment, all attributes from the information plans layer are displayed. Some of them are not required. Also notice one attribute is the web address of the associated information plan online. We'll alias the web address attribute as open in new tab and set its type to URL which will allow users to open its links. We'll also adjust the display order so the name of the plan appears first. That looks much cleaner. 
the linked plans can now also be accessed by users. Attribution text associated with published layers is displayed in the bottom right of the screen. Let's update our attribution information for our OS background map. Attribution information is now correctly displayed. The window title, logo and colour scheme can all be customised. We'll now update these settings to be more in line with the Crossrail branding. Links will point to the main Crossrail website and we'll also replace the logo and fab icon. Finally, we'll configure map themes. Map themes can be used to group related or commonly used layers. We'll create three themes. Simple, featuring the route and station layers. Engineering, with the additional information plans layer. And legislative, featuring the crossrail bill layer. We've uploaded a preview image for each theme. The theme buttons can now be used to enable the selected layers with one click. Map themes can even be used in place of the more traditional layer control tool.